And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Greetings, greetings, and greetings. Come on in the week 75 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Come on in, come on in. Let me know where you're coming from as you come in. Let me know where you're coming from. If you've been with us for 75 weeks or even 70 weeks, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, let me know. Let me know who's been rocking this long, man. It's 75 weeks. That's a long time. We got Demetrius Scott, Janine Wilkins, Ramos Elizabeth, uh, Dot McKeever, uh, McKeever Jeter in the building, Greg Riley in the building. Uh, Demetrius Scott said all 75 weeks, man, what an honor. I'm, I'm blessed by that. Um, and Ramos is from Newark. There you go. Newark is in the building. We got uh, Venice Lewis in the building, Donna Scherer Gant, Javon Jackson, Michael Benton, Benton, D. Walker, Angela Jefferson, Stacy Joseph, Teresa Moore. Love, I'm trying to keep up. Warren J. Pete, my wife, Kimberly Broughton Cafele. We got Teresa Thacker, Teresa Long, Anthony Russell, Patrice Powder. Um, where we have Sabrina Preston. Rodney Richardson, Tiffany Alexander, they're all in the building. Come on in. Rashard Davis is in the building. Come on in. Melanie Rogers Wilson, hit the share button as you come in. Hit the retweet button as you come in. Let them know. Let them know we're here. We're here. We're here for week number 75. Lou Saunders is in the building. Uh, Edward L. Joseph is in the building. Um, Pernicia Smith is in the building. John Herricks is in the building. Yes, sir. Greg Riley. Toledo Tigers, Negro Leagues. I'll talk about it a little more when we get rolling. Jessica Coleman, Otis Kitchen the second. My man is in the building. Michelle Perkins Griffin, Yvette Bradford is in the building. Jessica Coleman, Jasmine uh, Harris, Tony McClinney. Hit that share button, somebody. Hit that retweet button, somebody. If you're one of the first timers, this is your first time in, hit that share button for me. Let me, I mean, let me know that this is your first time. Yeah, hit the share button too. But if, if you're if you're a first timer, let me know you're a first time. I want to see who's here. We got Dr. Roz Gaskins in the building. We got Dr. Sheikah Houston in the building. I presume Tammy Taylor's in the building. Principal Taylor's in the building. Um, Vanessa Zes, Zeskan is in the building. Ken, Kenda Johnson Lawson. Uh, Lawson. Who, who else? Uh, Deniska. McZeal is in the building. Chandra Kai 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 I, Kai Wise. I know I messed that up. We got we got Mallory uh, Mallory Martin Floyd in the building. The deputy superintendent at, Cl um, at Canton City Public Schools in the building. I told y'all, man, we we got some some heavy hitters to check in. Man, we've had commissioners of education check in. We we I mean we we we've got some high level people to check in and that's a beautiful thing. We got Kendra Johnson, Lawson, jo Principal Josh Tovar, Cree uh, Abita is in the building. Sharon White, I've been having a hard time watching you guys, Josh, because I'm I'm always on an airplane when you guys are on, and I don't always have Wi-Fi, but I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, Adrian Wong is in the building. Josh Tovar said he just did 3.5 miles on the treadmill, and that's a good thing. Let that. Let, let let that influence or inspire somebody else to do 3.5. If they can't do 3.5, do 2.5, do 1.5, do one, do, do point five, but do something. We got Chanel Henry Wright in the building, cousin in the building. We got Yancey Mitchell, Jack, uh, Jacqueline East Orange in the building. You know, I wear East Orange on the sleeve, man. You know, I was speaking somewhere and they said, they said, you know, I'm 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 from East Orange. They said, but no, they said, I'm from Jersey City. I said, I lived there. They said, but but you you never mentioned Jersey City. You kept talking East Orange. I said, yeah, I just I just pay property taxes in Jersey City. I wear East Orange on the sleeve. So there's a difference. Uh, Angelie Rivera's in the building. Stephanie Jacobs in the building. Krista Faison in the building. Solomon Bazoo. Oh, man, I messed that up and it left me, but I, I got you. Ar uh, Arcella Austri's in the building. Sean Moore. Principal Moore, Crenshaw High School on the check-in. Man, we got Crenshaw in the building. That means you're up early, and I appreciate you, Principal Moore, doing your thing. 
who else we got here? We getting ready to get rocking. Hit the share button. Hit the retweet button. Let them know, man, we got some stuff to talk about today. I said Donna Sherrigant, I think, out there in Athens, Georgia. You know, I'm in a hotel, but I think I'm going to let it rip. It's 11 o'clock, um, so everybody should be awake by now i hope i'm not it's not like i'm in las vegas uh i'm in charlotte north carolina angela wright rodney richardson so with that being said it's 11 o'clock hit the share button hit the retweet button but let me say to you good morning greetings welcome to week 75 yeah you heard me right week 75 Five of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And I don't know about you. I think I know about you, though, but I don't know definitively. But by just by virtue of the fact that you checked in this morning, I think I know how you feel. But let me know. Let me let you know how I feel. I'm on fire. I brought it down like slightly. Right. But, but, you know, as I always say and as I always will say, I tell you I'm on fire every time I come on this broadcast because these are challenging times. And that's what we're going to talk about today in, in terms of my topic of closing the attitude gap, right? These are challenging times. But you chose leadership. And you can never, ever forget that. I know it's tough. I, I bet you everybody on this call is dealing with their own challenges, which are which are much broader, much greater than they have typically been in the past. This is a different time. We're in we're we're in the midst of a pandemic, right? So so this is a different kind of situation. But despite that, you still got to bring the fire. Woo! I'll get back to my old self when I'm home next Saturday. Let me let me let me say this to you. I got this quick motivational message to you, and I'm back on that word protecting. And and the message is protecting your worth. Once again, protecting your worth. What am I saying? I'm saying to you that you know some of you are in situations that are a little bit more challenging than say others, right? But you know your worth, right? There, there's nobody on the planet. That could dictate to me my worth, right? They, you know, if, if they want to play the role of validating me, I appreciate what you do, that type of thing, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll receive it. But here's what I'm saying. If someone on the opposite end of the spectrum, and now they, they want to tell me that I'm 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 a waste of time, I don't have I don't I don't add value, you know, all, all you know, all that negative criticism, that type of thing. See, for, for me, I don't hear that because I have a lock and key over my worth see so nobody see 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 i, I gotta holler at somebody here let me let me let me preach to somebody because somebody somebody probably needs this more than they need my planned agenda today when someone walks in your space a supervisor a director the superintendent wh whomever and, and 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 they want to diminish your worth because they they got an issue with you right so so maybe you've detected they don't like you they don't appreciate you they don't respect you so they come at you in a way to make you feel less than who and what you are i'm saying to you if you allow yourself to succumb to their agenda that says to me that you have not deliberately intentionally purposefully protected your worth it's like if, if you have a, a car that, and, and you want to protect it from being violated, you, you, you've you got a home, you want to protect it from being violated. You know, you got the cameras, you got the gates, you know, whatever it is, you know, or your computer, you want to protect it from being violated. So you don't leave it in the car and you got a hatchback so you can look inside the glass and, and anybody can see the case and go on and take your computer. You said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm going to bring the computer with me into the store, into the restaurant, which is what I do. I walk in the restaurants with my bag, right? Because I'm not leaving it in the car. So I'm going to protect it. So I'm saying to you, your worth works the same way. You've got to protect your worth. And that's done with this and this, right? So, so your head, your heart, you got to protect it, knowing that despite the fact that you don't respect me, you don't appreciate me, you don't like me, 
you don't care for me, you don't support me, whatever it is, you said, but that's all right, because I still know who and what I am. And I know I add value. And if I don't add value to this scenario, I will add it to a different scenario. But my worth is protected. Y'all understand that? You got to protect that because it's so fragile. You know, it's 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 like it's like you drop a glass on the floor. It can shatter if you allow it to. But if you protect it, then there's a higher probability that whatever forces come into your space, whatever forces come into your life, you're going to be all right. Right. You're going to be fine. So I went a little longer on that. Look here. y'all. I told you all last week when I had um, Principal Sean Hurd on, I said, you know, I go a little. I said, I'm not I'm not trying to rush those. I'm going solo today and next week. And then I got like three weeks of like heavy hitters. You know, that's all I bring on here is heavy hitters. Right. So I, but this this topic today. I gotta take my time, y'all. So I hope you can roll with me. I, hopefully, I could finish it by twelve. But just I gotta take my time singing these love songs, right? That's you know that's what Luther Vandross says. So let me let me let me let me jump in here. I, I gotta say this again: thoughts and prayers still to the victims of Hurricane Ida and Nicholas. I gotta keep saying that because it's not like uh, the storm's gone and they've recovered. It doesn't work that way. The storm is gone, but they're still dealing with the aftermath. A lot of Right. I mean, I'm still dealing with the aftermath of Ida myself in terms of my basement. Right. So, you know, so so just thoughts and prayers, because I know a lot of folks that come on the on, on the broadcast were in the path of one or one, one, either one or the other or both of those hurricanes. Next, um, welcome to all the first timers. You know, this week 75 and I welcome you. I'm glad you're here. Stay with us. We're going to be doing this like forever. Right. So just stay with me. Uh, I, you know, I'm gonna be doing. I'm, mean, you know, why, why, why would I stop doing this, right? It's, it's, if it's adding value to somebody, and then there's a whole generation that's like in high school and college that doesn't even know that this exists yet. They'll be in the space at some point, and here we are. I'll be a little older, but I'll still be here rocking, right? So, uh, welcome to you. Make sure you tell others to join you on the broadcast. Don't keep the information for yourself. Um, if you, if, if, if you, if you um, missed the previous, if your first time, you don't know about the previous seventy-four. They're on my channel. You see it on the bottom of the screen, the YouTube channel, Virtual AP Leadership Academy, 74 previous broadcasts, 74 hours of content, binge watch it, get it all. We're talking leadership with a particular focus on the assistant principal, but being relevant to everybody. Sunday morning commentary. Don't forget, this is a this is part A on, on Saturdays. Part A is Saturday. Part B is Sunday. I write a commentary every Sunday, try to do it Sunday morning early, and I post it on my virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page exclusively. You can't find it on Twitter. You can't find it on my blog page. You can't find it on my main page on Facebook. You have to go to my virtual AP Leadership Academy um, Facebook page, right? So go there. It's, it's ex the extension to Saturday, so more information. Folks say to me all the time, I say, man, Kefele, man, you just pouring out all this content. You're not asking for a dime. I said, yeah, man. That's, you know, we all who we are. That's who I am, right? So all I ask you to do is take advantage of it. Read it. You know, I don't put it out there to entertain. I'm putting it out or, or to sit there and collect dust. I'm putting it out there because I want somebody to be able to embrace it and run with it. And then you report back to us later. Man, we blue ribbon. Man, we 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 distinguished one title title one distinguished school award. Man, we 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 were on the Today Show, right? You know, whatever it is, because you're doing big things, and and I added a little 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 something 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 to help you to get there, right? Um, real quick, I got a brag, man. Got a brag. Yesterday, October first, we hit ten thousand. Woo, man! I gotta say that louder. Woo, ten thousand, ten thousand count. Best seller, ASCD. Got to brag, got to brag. But I got to thank you at the same time because a lot of y'all got the book. That's what made it happen, right? So I got to thank you too. So I'm bragging. Yeah, man. I mean, you got somebody got to pat yourself on the back sometime, man. I sat there and wrote this thing. So 10,000 copies sold in four months, right? Came out May 26, four months, right? So let's keep it going, man. I'm, next goal is 15, then 20, right? So if you don't have it, the equity and social justice education, 50. Get your hands on it, man. I want to thank all them superintendents out there and principals who've been buying it for the whole staff, the whole district, because that's been happening. That's a large part of why so many of them out there circulating. 
So, so here we are. So if you don't have your copy yet, and, and I see Mallory Floyd again, and I know Canton was, I think, I think y'all in the process of getting it now, if I'm not mistaken, right? So um, get your copy, right? Uh, the other two, the leadership books, I won't even show them now. I want to show you this. I've, I don't think I've ever put this on the screen before. I'm working from this today and maybe for the next few sessions because of the times we're in right now. In other words, I had to modif modify and adjust, right? Because this is what a lot of y'all are dealing with. So let me let me let me let me jump into it. If you, if you don't have it, Amazon.com. This is already a bestseller. It's been a bestseller since 2013, right? So Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, ASCD.org, PrincipalCafele.com, right? Closing. I appreciate that, um, uh, Mallory Floyd. Appreciate it. So let's let's go. Um, don't forget, Sheikah Houston and Tammy Taylor have 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 that event coming up on October five. Go to create and educate Facebook page to get the information and then join them at every Saturday at 1030. Join Sean Hurd at 10 o'clock and then join my man Josh Tovar and the crew on Sunday nights at um, 7 o'clock Eastern time. We're done, y'all. Let's get into it. Hit that share button. Hit the retweet button. My topic today is closing the attitude gap in your classrooms, right? Why am I why am I making such a shift? Because that's not really what I do on this broadcast. Because there's a lot of y'all out who are struggling in today's times. I've been speaking to a lot of schools over the past several weeks. You know, I, I went on an eight eight day tear, as some of you may know, last week when I was broadcasting from Vegas. That was the last day. And everywhere I go, man, people are worn out. People are tired. Uh, Principal Hurt and I talked about it last week. And, um, you know, Pete, so, so I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to give you some, right? So that's why I say, stay with me today, right? If I go past 12, just rock with me, hit the share button. Somebody else out there that's frustrated sitting, it's a Saturday afternoon they, or Saturday morning, they sitting around, man, I don't know how much more I could take of this, man. This, this is too much, man. I, you know, some of you are teachers out there, man, I don't, I don't know, man, this, this is rough. I've been, I thought I wanted to be an assistant principal, but I'm looking at the assistant principal at my school and man, this is, this is a bit much. I don't know. No, I, I got you. Get your notepad out. Get your pen out or get your device out, whatever you're going to use. And I, I want to start it off with a question. And I want you to drop this in the chat. My question is, how was the month of September? Right? How was September for you? Put that in the chat for me. And here's why I ask you to put it in the chat. Because I read these. I may not comment on everything. But I spend my afternoon, Saturday or Sunday, and I just read them. You know, I'm on four different platforms, so it's a lot to read. So it takes a little while, but I literally read every comment. So some weeks there, it, some weeks there are in excess of a thousand comments when you combine the four platforms, right? I'll read them all. Some weeks, depending on the topic, it could be up to two thousand comments. That's a lot of comments. So I read them all. So so drop it in the chat. How was the month of September, right? It could be a one word or like Dominique just said, rough, right? So, so whatever, whatever exhausting, um, um, exhilarating and exhausting, brutal, right? So drop it in the chat and, 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 and feel free to do it, you know, ongoing throughout this broadcast, overwhelming, because I want to address, I want to read that because I want to, I want to be able to internalize it, but then I want to be able to address it at the same time. Challenging fights every day, gangs um tiring exciting that's uh that is me sir i need an example of excellence to grow uh okay i got you man this thing is moving so fast uh hard a little bit frustrating exhausting challenging busy a uh, very stressful thought about leaving teaching uh, krista don't leave right because it's not going to stay this way right this is kind of where we are now and you'll remember those of you who are with me too stressful overwhelming about two or three weeks ago i said you got to pivot on some things. There's some of us out here, someone said it's too stressful. Um, there, there's some of us out here that we're trying to do 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, et cetera, trying to do that stuff in 2021. In other words, you're trying to be the old you in 2021, right? You can't be the old you in 2021. You, you got to pivot away from that. I'm not who I'm not who I was. Trust me when I tell you, whether in person, virtually, Saturday morning, I'm not who I was in 2019. I may I had to pivot. 
And if I didn't pivot, there's a lot of you on the call, you wouldn't even have known that I was born. Let's, I mean, let's let's let, let, let me keep it real. That's real talk. Had I not pivoted in 2020 and tried to be 2019 Kafele, a lot of you wouldn't know that I was born. You wouldn't be on these calls on Saturday because I would have been still doing the old strategy and you wouldn't have known that I was around. Right. So I had to pivot. I had to make a shift. I had to make a change. I had to make a drastic adjustment. Right. In order to stay ahead. So I'm saying to you, there's some of you on here and I see you. Uh, Josh said, Ghana, we got a ch uh, challenge and transformational leadership is key. And, and so 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 there, there's so many of us on here and throughout. You got to I, I gave you the blueprint about two weeks ago. Right. The leadership blueprint and, 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 and that situation analysis asked the question, what are the areas I need to make a pivot? Right. So so let's let's look at some things. I got a lot for you all today. So many teachers and counselors and administrators. And other other titles have been reporting to me that. 2021 going into 2022 has been so challenging, but they're saying the biggest challenge, the thing that they're working working hardest with is the social and emotional well-being of the students, right? I mean, I'm seeing all these videos, y'all, local stuff, national stuff. I'm seeing all these videos that people are recording, that children are recording of, of these fights in the building. And someone had written fights every day. And, and, you know, I know that there have been fights before the pandemic, but I think that the level of fights that a lot of you are seeing now, this is abnormal, right? This, 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 this is an aberration. This, this, this is going further than what we, we expect, right? So Sheikha Houston said SEL, right? The so social emotional well-being of young people. That's every, everybody's telling me that that's it. It, I mean, no one's saying to me the academics. Of course, you know, people, you know, people talk about that, you know, I don't use that language learning loss, but people talk about the fact that the youngsters didn't get the same thing that they would have gotten uh pre-pandemic. And I and I understand that. However, people are not coming to me talking, you, you, Ohio girls talk about the TikTok challenges. Oh man, that's 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 off the chain, right? But but see, people are not coming to me saying academic performance. I'm not hearing that. They're, they're talking about the social and emotional well-being of young people and, and thereby what we do. So I, I want to talk about that. Right. So 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 like here's what I'm here. I, mean, I got my I'm using my phone again, y'all, because I'm I, you know, I'm not home. I couldn't print out my notes. Motivation is lacking, they say. Disconnect from from the learning environment. So so to motivate. Let me go back to motivation. So, so, so they're reporting to me or just reporting out in sessions that I do. Principal Gafele, the youngsters are not motivated, right? They, they, they're just not motivated, right? It's, 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 it's a different youngster from, from, from before. Let me, I got, I got, y'all, I got to jump up real quick and turn on my air. Hang on. All right, here we go. I got to make sure I didn't turn on the heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We good. I had to get some air. Yo, I'm getting hot. You know, I wear these Negro League shirts, Toledo Tigers. You know, these made out of flannel, y'all. I don't know how they wore these back in them days, but that's that's what they wore. So, so, so motivation. And I'm not going to get into commentary on any of these. I just want to go through the list. Uh, disconnect from the disconnected from the learning environment. So, like this this disconnection, this this detachment from from the overall learning environment. And, and the learning space, if you will. Apathetic towards school is another concern. Just, just this apathy, like, like, hey, I don't even want to be here. That that type of thing. Uh, prefer to question is at home to do what? Um, behavioral challenges, which we've been talking about. Conflict with students. So And that's that discontent and arguing and fighting that, that I talked about before. But but here's what here's what I want to say about that. Your teachers, I'm talking primarily to leaders. We talked about a few weeks ago, about a month ago, about the difference between control and influence. And I'm and I'm I'm arguing here 
that your teachers have influence over motivating students, over the disconnect from the learning environment, over apathy towards school, over uh, preferring to be at home, behavioral challenge, conflict with students, conflict between students. My argument here is your staff have influence over each of these variables, but, but this is a leadership academy. So my question to you is, is that a part of your conversation with staff in terms of your staff, in terms of their influence over those variables that I just delineated? See, is that a part of your conversation? I don't mean solely in a formal sense, a formal conversation. I mean, your ongoing conversation, encouraging staff, inspiring staff, reminding staff of the influence that they have, of the power that they possess in their hands, the influence. Because see, those, those variables that I just gave you, they're nothing new. It's not like these are things that miraculously appeared in 2021. This has been our fight all along, right? It's, it's, it's just that it's intensified. And that, that's why I go back and I say, so therefore, there's certain pivots that you and I have to make since some of these behaviors, some of these situations that we're, we're observing have, in fact, intensified. So but then given the inherent or built in racial inequalities that we find just overall in America is particularly troubling it's particularly alarming when we talk about young people of color and, and other underserved populations, right? It's, it's particularly alarming there because now we got youngster where education is the ticket. Education is the door to success. And you got youngster with the mindset, I don't need this. I don't need this. Now, y'all tell me about my signal. I got a bad signal, Josh. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, they said my signal's getting weak. That's not good. Um, how I look on the phone, Ken? As a matter of fact, how's my signal right now? Somebody talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. We got to get this thing in. I got the, I mean, I got the best I'm going to get, but let me, let me, um, let me check the Wi-Fi. Hang on a second. Let me just look on my phone and see what I'm looking like here. Bear with me. Bear with me. Don't leave me. Y'all telling me I got a bad signal and I don't know it. Yeah, looking fine on my phone. Now I see a little stall there. All right. Um, just work with me, y'all. I'm in the hotel. Work with me. All right. So I guess it, it, it depends on the phone. It's some of you say it's freezing off and on. Some of you are saying you hear me. So just work with me. And um, you know, we try to we when, when you get, you know, you can watch the YouTube later, and that one will probably be better than this. But this is uh, you know, it's hotel Wi-Fi. And it's a it's a it's a crowded hotel. So just uh, work with me. So so here, as I as I speak, just work with me on the signal. In addition to that, I said oversized classrooms, right? So you got oversized classrooms. You got overall health anxieties, math uh, mask issues, conflicts with parents over mask and vaccines, and then to an overall toxic environment is what all. Uh, is, is what others have been saying to me about just what they're dealing with in school in today's time. So, so what I want to do, I've said, and, and I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at my sequence here, and I'm saying, man, if, if, the, if, the, if, if some of you guys are not seeing me good, then I'm going to struggle with what I'm about to do because I wanted to show you a video. Um, maybe I won't be able to show you that video. Um, matter of fact, I didn't even, I shut, my, I shut this thing down just to make sure that it was working. Uh, give me, give me, give me a second, y'all. I hate this in real time, but just give me, give me a second. I want to, I want to see if I can get this video up for you. I wanted to show this to you. I should have had it prepared for you before I came on, but I shut the computer down, anticipating that this might be an issue, and um, and I forgot to put the video back. So let me, let me just see, let me see if you can see this video because we, what, what, what? Bear with me. I'm talking to myself now. Bear, bear with. Me me a second bear with me bear with me all right bear with me here we go here we go here we go i gotta pause this okay no that's not the one bear with me y'all i'm uh i'm struggling y'all made me nervous here when you told me i was i was messing up here all right so 
what I want to do, I want to I want to show you a video because I, I you know I, I got this model that I've lived by for a long time. I say, if we can transform the attitude, content and achievement will take care of themselves. Let me say it again. When we transform the attitude, content and achievement will take care of themselves. So with that said, let me uh, hopefully you guys can see this video because I want you I want you to see this real quick because I it's a video that was done with of me when I was the principal at North Tech and it and it kind of captures what I just said to you. So let me let me let me see if I can get that going. Uh I mean I know I can get it going. It's just a matter of if you can see it. So let's 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 see what happens here. Take a look. I breathe and sleep and I eat it. It's my entire life. What I do as a principal, what I do as an educator, what I do as a motivator. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I tell my staff, I tell my students, I tell my parents all the time that I'm unemployed and I have no job. I wake up, I wake up to my mission. I wake up, I wake up to my passion. I've been a principal now for 13 years in North Tech, I'm in my fifth year. When I came here, I heard the stories about what it used to be. So I came in very hardcore. I knew what I wanted from the outset. I knew what these young people were capable of doing and we went to work on it. And here we are with 98% of our students graduating having passed state standardized tests in language arts and 88% having passed mathematics portion. U.S. News and World Reports magazine recognized us as one of America's best high schools for two consecutive years. We're doing a phenomenal job here. Kafai is a principal in the best sense of the word. He's a master teacher. He begins every day by teaching over the intercom. We're on the move. We're in flight. Hopefully you had a great weekend, but much more importantly, it was a productive weekend because you completed all work assignments. You proceeded to study for a minimum of two hours in a quiet environment. Morning announcements are very important because it sets a tone for the rest of the day. Have your best day yet while maintaining a most positive attitude. Oh, oh check. check. We're, We're on the move. The move. People ask the question. question. What's so different so about your leadership from other people? Other people. I say it's very simple. simple. If I can change, change the attitude, the content, content will, fall will fall into place. place. Power Monday is, is every Monday, every Monday the student body, the student body has, to dress, has to dress professional style, professional shirt, style, tie, tie slack, for gentlemen, ladies, and they business, business attire. And it's to show that for the whole day you will be empowered. When Power Monday, when Power Monday first, first started, started, I hated, I hated it. it. I, I, did not like, dressing, not, like up. dressing up but once, but I, got once I got used to it, used it, to it, was, it like, was like okay, okay something, something that's going to help me in my future visiting classrooms every day is a very important, very important aspect of what, aspect of what I, do. I do you show me you show me a principle that, that you can, can find in the office on a regular basis and i'll show you a school that doesn't have leadership things will be going well in the classroom kids want to show him what they want to show him what there's such a respect for him when i see mr kefeli coming into my classroom i'll be like okay he's observing me how Am I poor? Am I not so? I'm gonna do my best, not to impress him, but you know, just to show him that I'm working towards that goal that he has. Matter of fact, let me see you again. He can stop some students in the hallway and say, "Their are tiring to them." And we've got 750 students. So when he's funny, hey, you know, you got that scene, man. You gotta bring it out. That's powerful to them. Prince Wukafele motivates everybody in the school to perform their best. Become the hundred percent club. Hundred percent, not hundred. Hundred percent. Very demanding. I expect that every student that does all homework assignments one hundred percent of the time. It is housekeeping time. The teachers provide me with a list of whatever student whatever student complete homework, and we read their name. Read their name. Or would it be the following three students report to my office? We call them down. To let them to know let that them they have what they I call read a thon the next morning. Next that means that morning. that's the time that's to sit time still, to sit quietly, and just read them. Just read them. Gentlemen, gentlemen. One thing, One thing that I want to get is responsibility. The fellow calling everyone, calling everyone over, over, if not going hard, it teaches you that you have a responsibility here. Responsibility, yeah. responsibility, yeah. responsibility yeah. is to excel. To excel. He, he treats his children, children as his children own. As his own. look up to him, I look guess, up to him, his, his father, father, because father, because don't have father. Don't have father. Even though my father is not a mistake, I feel it was a person that inspired me, that motivated me, that motivated me to do better in time. This student has his cell phone up. They call him 24 hours. And that's really... Unreal. There's very special people that you want to have to once in a while. 
and Brody, and Brody Keller Keller is one of them. He's, he's, he's kind of man that he movies about. about. When I look, when I look into, my into my student's face, what I want, what I want to see is hope. Not my not hope, hope, hope for them, but hope for themselves. So. I feel that I, feel that I, I am prepared, prepared to face the work because of my strengths here in the tank. Since my freshman year, I've been growing and growing more, and now I'm I'm an honest with to wake up and, and, and go and motivate, and inspire, or to, to educate, educate other educated other educated young people young and parents. parents. I couldn't ask, I couldn't ask for better, better life. All right. Um, I hope that you all were able to see that. Um, let's see. Otis Kitchen to see if she could just say, okay, so right. way um, so and so apparently um, I hope that you all were able to okay. All right. So I sh I showed you that. I don't know who could see it. Um let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, I'm just looking at the comments. My wife said it was cool, and some of y'all say, okay, cool. So let's go. Let's go. We got a lot to talk about. So I showed you that because that was not a high performing school before I got there. And, and my attitude, despite whatever the challenges, and I'm not gonna get into specificity of those challenges, despite whatever those challenges were, as leader, my, my attitude mattered, right? I'm gonna say that again. As leader, my attitude mattered. But but I want to I want to I want to show you an ex I want to share with you an experience I had once as I as I lead into this topic of closing the attitude gap, not the achievement gap, but the attitude gap. It was um, 2006. I went to Selma, Alabama, for the first time. It was uh, I was down there to work with a school in Montgomery, but since I was 50 miles away from Selma, I went on to Selma, and I wanted to stand on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, you know, that's the bridge of Bloody Sunday, March 7, 1965, led by John Lewis when they were marching for the right to vote, which led to the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So I wanted, to I wanted to stand on that bridge. I wanted to walk that bridge. And many of you, some of you, I guess, know that I do Facebook Lives on that bridge every year, right? I did one over the summer in July. One, one. So as I was on that bridge the first time, just kind of thinking about the marchers, the 600, including John Lewis and Jose Williams, who also led the march, a thought popped into my head, which, which, which really led who I became as a leader, right? I was already a leader, but it took me to another level. The question was, Principal Kefele, and I don't want to get spiritual and say it was God's, you know, a question popped in my mind, right? And it said, Principal Kefele, as it relates to your attitude toward your students and your overall leadership of your school, who are you? Let me say that again. Kefele, as it relates to your attitude toward your students and your overall leadership of your school, who are you? In other words, what's your what's your identity as leader? And I and, and you know the question just came out of nowhere while I was on the bridge thinking about the march, and then I'm thinking. So I guess I started thinking about me in relationship to the march, the work I do, and and what is the correlation between what I do and what happened on that bridge? Like like like, do I matter? That's the question. Like like, does the work I do does it matter? Does it measure up to what happened on this bridge, or am I just insignificant? So as it relates to the attitude of your students and your overall leadership, who are you? See, and I thought about it for a long time. I was on the bridge for a very long time that day. And I came up with something which I don't need to share with you right now. I, I just want to stay focused. But I had an answer. And it was a positive answer. So then a second question pops in my head. Principal Kefele, what is your purpose? Hmm. And I start going deep within my soul, my, my spirit, and I'm I'm thinking, what is my purpose? Right. And I knew, but 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 I knew my purpose when I'm in school. 
I wanted I had to answer this question. What is my purpose while I'm standing on this particular bridge in this moment? That's a little bit different. Right. So. I came up with an answer and I thought it was an answer. So for both questions, who are you? What are you about? Or what is your purpose? In fact, let me give you the exact wording. What are you about? Which translates into what is your purpose? But then the third question was the one. And it was only three. The third question said, what is your most recent evidence? Hmm. What is your most recent evidence? In other words, who are you? Okay, I answered the question. The third question said, prove. The second question, what are you about? Meaning, what's your purpose? The third question said, prove it. So it said, what's the evidence of who you claim to be and what you say you're about? Let me flip that on you now in the context of today's discussion. Hey, somebody watching now, hit that share button, hit that retweet button. I don't know how my reception is, but we're going to keep it, let it keep going. Hey, somebody, as it relates to your attitude toward your students and your overall leadership, who are you? Who are you? And that's not an easy question to answer, right? Who are you? And I don't mean I'm 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 John Brown this and that. No, no, no. Deeper than that, who are you as it relates to the attitude of your student? I mean, your attitude toward your students. Who are you as it relates to your overall leadership? That's a different question, right? That's a different question. Josh said I got a good signal now. That's good, right? So so that's a different question, right? But then that third question: What is your most recent evidence because see that's the see see question one is a question of identity question two is 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 a question of purpose but question three is a question of authenticity and that's key it's a question of authenticity so now i'm i'm saying to you i'm encouraging you in 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 the context of the times that you are operating in right now Post those questions. Like if I didn't point it out to you in the video, but those three questions were on the wall when I was when I had the microphone in my hand in my office, and it were and I and I would refer to them every single day. I would go to my there was a mirror next to the on on the wall, and then underneath the mirror were these three questions. So every day my ritual: walk in the office, turn the light on, and go to the question. Kafele, who are you today? Kafele, what are you about today? Kafele, what is your most recent evidence today? Right? And then at the end of the day, I'm not going home, even if I had a bad day, until I go back to that mirror, back to those three questions on the wall. It's as bad as the day may have been, because I'm, I'm human just like anybody else. Like, I have bad days. Right? So go to the mirror. Kafele, who are you? Kafele, what are you about? Kafele, what is your most recent evidence? A question of identity, a question of purpose, a question of authenticity. So that's 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 in addition to everything I said to you about being outside. Is my school a better school because I lead it and all that went transpired with that that I talked about back in the summertime, right? And we'll revisit it at some point throughout this school year, right? So now I'm saying to you, and some of you have been writing the questions on the screen, so that's a good thing because you know I don't. I, I just didn't I don't give you all all that stuff in print because then the clients will be like, wait a minute, we paid you and you you putting this on Saturday morning. So I don't do it. But here's the thing, y'all. Who are you? Write that down. What are you about? Write that down. What is your most recent evidence? Write that down and ask yourself selves that question every day when, when the kids want to fight. When the kids want to be disrespectful, when the kid is apathetic, when the youngster doesn't seem to want to be in school, when 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 the staff is challenging you, right? When the staff seems to have lost respect for you, you know, because that happens in some places. When the staff doesn't demonstrate appreciation for you, whatever it is, when the parents are disrespecting you, when the parents are not aligned with you, whatever those challenges may be, when the students are underperforming, I want you to go to those three questions, right? And I just want you to ask yourself, wait a minute, in the context of all of this, this chaos, in the context of all of these obstacles, pressures, demands, challenges, who am I? And, 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 and try to do this by yourself. Accountability partner could be there fine, but not just in your body. Who am I? And have your mirror handy. 
right? What am I here? Yeah, I brought y'all know I don't leave without this. It's dirty. Hey, 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 hey Josh, it's filthy. <laughs> That's so my mother sees that. Who am I? What am I about? And what is my recent, most recent evidence? Let me clean this mirror, man. It's it's filthy. I've been using it all week. Here we go. Look at that. Boom. One fingerprint. I said, much improved. So, so use that. But now, in the context of that, closing the attitude gap, what are we talking about here? See, we talk about the achievement gap all the time. But I said, no, nah, I, I, I want to I focus on on attitude because achievement's not my issue. Let me give you that motto again. Transform the attitude and content and achievement will follow, meaning that content will become relevant and achievement will take care of itself. But if the attitude is not such that it's willing to embrace it, then it's very hard to deliver it. But if the attitude is such that it's willing to welcome it, that it's willing to embrace it, then there's a higher probability that learning and thereby achievement are going to happen, right? So, but it starts with, man, got to transform the attitude. So I say, well, then therefore, my focus is not the achievement gap. My focus is the attitude gap. And that, and hence, I went on and, Put it in a book. So I'm saying to you, like, like, let's talk about this thing. What do I mean? And I, you know, I'm apologize to you guys in advance that I don't have all these definitions on the screen and all so forth. You got to, you got to use your ear. Or when I'm off, then you can use your rewind button and you can go back and 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 break it down like game film, frame by frame, and get all that, get all those that wording that you need, right? So the attitude gap, like, what does that mean? Well, when I created the definition. I put it in, I, I said, I, I said, I want to give it two definitions, one for students, one for staff, right? Let me give you the student definition first. I'm saying the attitude gap is the gap between those students who have the will, want you to remember that word, will to achieve excellence and those who do not. Look like my signal might have got a little weak again, but just work with me. It kind of goes up and down here and now it's going back up. So again, the gap between those students who have the will to achieve excellence and those who do not. The key word being will. So the will to achieve excellence. Notice the word that's missing, the word skill. The word skill is not there. So we're talking about the will because we're talking about attitude. So what happens when students arrive to school and lack will? Well, we got a whole lot of work to do. Because the achievement can't occur at optimal levels if the youngster doesn't want it. So therefore, for me, in terms of that definition, I said, I, I got I to gotta create a school where the focus is on building a sense of will to be successful in school, right? So, so with that, I want you to write this down. I got these three questions that guide the definition. And I'll be I'll be back home next Saturday, so we'll have a full signal. Cause I could I can see that this signal's not good right now. So I'll be both, huh? Yeah, I'll be home next Saturday, and 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 for the, quite a few Saturdays, and then I'll have you know we'll have the full strength, full strength. So these three questions to kind of guide guide the definition. Number one: Are my students excited about themselves? Right. Once again, are my students excited about themselves? So let's say, for example, you say, hmm, they're, they're not. They're, 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 they're really not necessarily excited about self, like like youngster that has issues with the person in his or her mirror. How are you going to take this youngster to high levels of learning and achievement and the youngster has issues with self, right? So that question has to guide the definition, the gap between those students who have the will to achieve excellence and those who do not. That first question has got to drive the approach. Are my students excited about themselves? Number two. Are my students excited about the possibilities for learning? 
Like does learning matter? How do you teach a youngster at a high level when the youngster has concluded that learning doesn't matter? So now you remember, I keep using that word pivot. There's certain pivots you have to make toward making learning relevant. The youngster sees the correlation between learning and enjoying a successful life later on. You've got to be able to sell that. And then the th third question to drive the definition, are my students excited about the prospects for their future? Like, does, does, does the future matter to them? So because if, if we can make if we can help them to make the future matter, then there's a higher probability now that learning will matter. And, and then there's a higher probability now that I may feel good about myself. So the three of them are intertwined. They're interconnected. But you can never lose sight of the three questions. Right. So, again, are my students excited about themselves are my students excited about learning are my students excited about the prospects for their future so then and i'm giving you the very short condensed version because you know i know what's going on with this this wi-fi so now but when i but when i created that definition i said but there's there, there there's some this there's there's an adult definition i need to create as well so i i, I looked at this attitude gap again and, and let me just demonstrate when i say gap on, on my left hand here, which is coming across to, on your right side, on my left hand here, this is a youngster that's highly motivated. And on my right hand, this is the opposite extreme, a youngster who seemingly lacks the motivation. And then you got everybody in between. I said, that's the gap I want to close. I'm not worried about a skill gap. I'm not worried about an achievement gap because my premise walking in every day is that the children are brilliant that the children are special that's 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 my premise coming in every day the children are brilliant the children are special but but the, the challenge is are they excited excited about what excited about themselves excited about learning excited about the prospects of their future that's where i want to put my emphasis right there so now imagine you know all the things that you guys were typing in the chat when i said let let me know let me know what september was and you were telling you were sharing with me right well you have students clearly who may not be excited about themselves who may not be excited about learning who may not be excited about the prospects for their future particularly numbers two and three particular so the question i have for you what is it that you're doing to get youngster excited about learning what is it that you're doing to get youngster excited about the prospects for their future. I know I wasn't excited about learning and you guys know my story. I know I wasn't excited about the prospects for my future. That wasn't, that, that didn't matter to me. I was doing nothing to prepare for that. That did not matter to me at that time. But once it did matter, y'all see me. I've been on fire for 35 years, man. I've been blazing. I'm working up a sweat now. I got the AC on. I've been, I'm blazing. Because I got excited and I saw what I, I saw the possibilities. I saw the prospects. So now with so, so now with the staff definition, write this down. What is the attitude gap? The gap between those educators who have the will to be amazing at their craft and who do not. Once again, the gap between those educators who have the will to be made at their craft and those who do not right so in other words let, let me let me explain this to you on my left hand you got this educator who comes to work every day like fired up can't wait to get there can't even sleep at night because can't wait to get back to school tomorrow and then on the other hand you got this one that's saying yo i'm burnt out i'm tired i'm, I'm sick of this i don't I, I just i gotta find something else to do and then you got everybody in between i'm asking the question hey leader out there we get ready to translate this into your leadership. Hey, leader out there. Let me see what this says. Uh, okay. Hey, leader out there. I'm, I'm asking you. Do you have the will to be amazing at your craft of leadership? Right? Again, do you have the will to be 
be amazing at your craft of leadership. See, and, and, and I don't mean you have to go out bragging and boasting, telling people, man, I'm amazing. I'm striving to be a No, 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 no. I'm talking about you and this. That's all I'm talking. You and this. Do you have the will to be amazing at what you do? But see, now with you being a leader in your school, an assistant principal, a principal, a superintendent, a director, an assistant a superintendent, whatever your capacity may be. Well, that means you supervise staff. And the conversation in terms of your instructional leadership is not all academics. A part of that conversation is your encouragement. A part of your conversation is that uplifting. A part of your conversation is that being inspiring and helping that teacher to feel amazing at what he or she does. See, it's not, it's not just talking the X's and the O's. It's not just talking about student achievement, right? It's, but, but now we're, we're, we're even talking the SEL of staff, the social emotional learning of staff. So, so it, when you're having these conversations with staff, because during these times like this, your staff needs to be fired up. It's easy to call out sick. And then you don't have subs. It's easy to make that call. But if I'm working in a school where I've got leadership that has that is focused on closing the attitude gap, not the achievement gap, the attitude gap, where that leader said, Man, the attitude gap, like Kefele said, is not confined to my students. That attitude gap is also an inherent part of, of some of my staff. So I've got to make sure that I'm working with my staff in terms of their attitude, because I want my staff to feel like, again, going to the definition that they have the will to be amazing at their craft, right? So again, for, just for the sake of those of you who are writing, the gap between those educators who have the will to be amazing at their craft and those who do not. So you got that gap in your school. You want to close that. So you got 100% of the administrators, they want to be amazing. 100% of the teachers, they want to be amazing. So, so, so just keep that in mind, right? Keep that in mind. Let me keep moving. So now there are three questions to drive that definition. Question number one. Am I passionate about my students? So here you are as leader and you're having ongoing discussions with your staff, ongoing meetings with your teachers. And, and, and a part of the, the conversation is the question, hey, teacher, are you passionate about them? And the teacher's going to say yes, but, but, but get deeper. Like all of them? The ones you send down to the dean of students or the or to the assist to me, the assistant principal, or whomever, you know, whatever it is, the one that's been disrespectful, the one that's been absent, the one that the mother is not cooperative, you know, all that kind of stuff. Are you passionate about that youngster? Because if you lack that passion for that particular youngster, that youngster knows it. That youngster, and, and so does the rest of the class, right? So I'm saying here, a part of that conversation is the question. Question one, am I passionate about my students, right? Number two, and this is a big one, am I passionate about my craft of teaching? Let me break this down into teaching and leadership. Let's go, let's go with the teaching first. No, let's go to leadership first. So here you are leader. And, 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 and 2021 has been a challenging year so thus far. 2020, 21 was a challenging year. But I'm going to ask you, in the context of everything I said about making a pivot, are you, despite the challenges, have you been able to sustain your passion for your craft of leadership? And, I, and I'm, I'm using that word craft very intentionally. So, so, so in other words, I'm saying leadership is leadership. But I want to put it in a category of it's something you have to build something you have to develop. It's your craft. It's your thing. It's what you do. So for me, teaching was my craft, not just my job, not just my profession, not just my career, not even just my mission. 
teaching was my craft. I wanted to be great at it. Let me just put it out there. I wanted to be great at it. I want to at least be the best version of myself at it, right? Josh, how's my signal? So I wanted to be that guy. But then as a principal, I'm not comparing myself to other principals, but I wanted to be the best version of myself. My leadership, yes, it was my career. Yes, it was my profession. Yes, it was my job, but that stuff don't matter. It's irrelevant. Yes, it was my mission. That's relevant. Thank you, Josh. But but also it was my craft. I had to be good at it because if I'm not good at it, then nobody benefits from it. Y'all don't hear me. Thank you, Tanya. I had to be good at it. In fact, I had to strive to be great at it. Only reason I'm not saying I was great at it because that don't sound right coming across on the on the on 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 the on the live stream. So I, I, I strive to be great at it. I strive to be the best version of myself at it. I strive to be extraordinary. I strive to be phenomenal at at this thing called school leadership. But let me be like extremely transparent. I'm a speaker, man. I've been doing this for 35 years. Full time for the past 10 years. You think when I go out on a stage or in a room or on a virtual call or on a Saturday morning academy, you think I'm content with being okay? You think I'm content with being pretty good? I want to, when I get off this thing every morning, I want to be able to look at myself in this mirror or, or, or on the screen when I look at it later and say, I delivered the best I could. That's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to say I left it all on the table. Matter of fact, I, I got to share this with y'all. I wasn't going to do this, but I got to. Listen, because we're talking about y'all being able to rise above these challenges right now. I was watching this interview yesterday with a guy. Some of y'all would know his name. Others won't. His name is Shannon Sharp. He has, he has this podcast called Club Shay Shay, right? And, and he was interviewing Mark Jackson. He used to play for the Pacers and the Knicks, right? And he said, he, he asked him the question about who are, the, who are the two, like, I guess most, what's the word he used? Two of the players that, that get, gave more than, like, anybody. He, no, he said, what's the player that gave more than anybody? Gave more of himself. He said, I got to give you two. Y'all want y'all to hear this, y'all, because this thing blew my mind. I was listening to it on, on, the, on the treadmill here at the hotel yesterday he said michael jordan and kobe bryant he said these are the only two players that i've ever seen who were willing to die on the basketball court i want y'all to hear he said these are the only two players he said he, he said i know who all of them are he said these are the only two that would breathe their last breath on the court who would give it everything and willing to die on the basketball court man i listen to that thing and i'm you know i'm on the treadmill and i'm you know i'm always thinking education you know i like sports but i always I always translate it into education and i say i ask myself was i that guy that would leave it all on the table that would give it everything i've got to be the best version of myself remember we said the will to be amazing at your craft See, so I was inspired by that. But see, that's that's because when I'm, I'm, you know, I'm one of them workaholics, man. I'm one of them go hard people. You know, the eight days last week, you know, and, and I got you think that was bad. I was telling my wife November's coming up after October. I got so I got three weeks. that's like going to be like 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 them three weeks might put me in the hospital. Right. It's, it's that brutal. You know, I don't know why I said yes so many times, but I did. I'll be fine. But but, you know, I'm one of them dudes. I'm just I'm just going hard, man. I'm going hard for what I feel is going to benefit somebody. I'm going hard for what I feel is right. So I'm asking you the question with that definition, the will to be amazing at your craft. So in question number two, am I passionate about my craft of leadership that you're going to go hard, not die for it? You know, so I ain't going to go to that extreme. But I mean, you want it so badly. That you're going to do what you got to do to be the best you possible. That's what I'm saying. The best version of yourself. See that that's that's what I mean, right? That's what I mean. So 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 that required. That's a different mentality. 
it's a different mindset. I mean, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm not asking you to violate your self-care. But I am saying maybe you need to pivot and restructure your life so that you can give your professional side what it needs toward nurturing, crafting, cultivating your craft. See, because right now in 2021, uh, going into 22, this may require a portion, a part of you, a portion of you, a segment of you that you didn't even know you had. I think I need to say that again. This may require an aspect. That's a better word. It one, an element of you that you didn't even know you possessed. You can't be 2019 you, 2018 you. You got to pivot and you got to figure out who is 2021 me. Right. You got to figure that out because 2021 you is probably somebody very different from the old you. But you might be trying to use old you strategies in, in, in this current situation. So, again, am I passionate about my students? Am I passionate about my craft of leadership? But now let's look at your staff because that's the same question you want to bring to them. Are you passionate? about your craft of teaching. That may require some deep conversation because teacher may not even be thinking of the work as a craft. Teacher may be thinking of the work as my job, as my means of supporting my family, which I'm not going to argue with one iota. But in terms of becoming great, it's got, got to transcend just a job. It's, 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 it's got to be that, no, this is, it's my thing. This is my craft. This is what I do. This is who I am away from home. See, so, 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 but see, that's, that might be a conversation that, that you guys are just not having in your school. And therefore, all these things you're seeing with students in particular that you guys are grappling with and then using old strategy to grapple with it, you may need to come together as a collective and have the conversation about us being passionate about our craft. What does that translate into? What does that mean? That means that we may need to rethink, re-examine what this craft is that we do and how we approach it. And maybe we may need to transform. You know, you watch, you know, you, you look at sports and you see that teams, teams evolve. They make trades. Uh, they, 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 um, certain players are, are let go. They're waived or they're fired, right? New GMs come in, general managers. New coaches coming, come in, right? So, so teams changing because you can't even know, like, like you take for example, a team could be a Super Bowl winning team, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be that same team next year because other teams have made shifts to get better in relationship to you. But if you didn't make some shifts, some changes, some adjustments as well, and now you bring the same squad. You may not be as good as you think you are because other teams made adjustments because of you. In fact, some of y'all know the sports world. The new, the Brook, I'm going to say New Jersey, the Brooklyn Nets. They got a, a big three: Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, who we don't know is going to play, and 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 um and and and, and James Hart. Well, the Lakers knew that we can't keep the same the the same run roster and compete with them even though we're not in the same conference but we could meet in the finals we need a different roster so they had a decent roster but they said they can't compete with that roster so they had to go and find some new players they old but they knew to the team some of them came back from being there a year ago but they changed the roster they had to adjust to the times the roster that they had would probably work two years ago but it won't work in 2021 now that the Nets have this super team. I hope you hear me, even if you not, sports is not your thing. You have to make certain adjustments. You can't be the same person. So now here you are talking to your staff. You, you've read the room. You've analyzed the, the, the audience. You, 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 you've read the data. You've read your story. And you see that things are not what they used to be. So now here you are having the heart-to-heart -heart conversation as a staff 
well, we got to do some things differently. And then you proceed to craft out a new a new plan, map out a new plan, a new course of action, as opposed to trying to be the same that you used to be. Thanks, John. I'm getting ready to cut. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to shut it down in a few minutes because because of the signal. Because I got some too much important stuff to be on a on a bad signal. So the first question again under the will to be amazing talking about the staff am i passionate about my students am i passionate about my craft of teaching my craft of learn of our leading and then the last one am i passionate about my own professional group and development in those areas that i deem need improvement let me let me tell you what i mean by that i'm not asking you about any professional development that someone recommends you that's not what this discussion is. I'm saying, are you so passionate about your work that you have you have detected deficiencies? You have detected areas where you need to grow, right? And as a result of detecting those areas, you said, I'm going to get the development, the professional development that I need. I'm going to seek out my own professional development so that I can become better so that I can become greater in that area that I see clearly that I'm deficient, right? So again, when I talked about motivating students, um, students lacking motivation, when I talked about disconnected from the learning environment, apathetic towards school, prefer to be at home, behavioral challenges, conflict with students, conflict, a conflict between students, those could be areas where your leadership is being challenged right now. And you need to do some things differently as a result of your leadership being challenged right now, right? So maybe there's some areas that you need to grow. It may not be professional development. It may be something else. Someone said that number three cut out. Am I passionate about my own professional growth and development in those areas that I deem need improvement, right? So here's what I'm going to do. It's 12.07. Y'all telling me I'm in and out. I can tell by my numbers. They've never been this low at this time. So, so, so I know some people are really struggling with this. So what I'm going to do, I'll be, I'll be home next week. I'll be home for many Saturdays now. I just had to get this week out of the way. I think I will be. Nah, nah, nah matter, matter of fact, no, nah, I ain't going to be home. Yeah, I'll be home for a while. So anyway, we'll come back. And I got so much more to do because uh, we're talking about you being able to adapt to your current surroundings. Things. And that's what this is all about under the umbrella of closing the attitude gap. So closing the attitude gap is a framework of five strands, the environment for learning, attitude towards students, relationship with students, compassion for students and relevance and in instruction. We're going to break all that down next week. And hopefully that's going to help you guys in terms of overcoming some of these new challenges that you feel that are that, that you guys are facing right now. So with that said, um let me just close it out before you leave and say to you and let me let me bring this back up for the newbies here um where are we at here here we go here we go let me put this back up here and where are we now here we are so 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 make sure that once again i don't know the video maybe on youtube it's it's a little easier to to make out than it was live so go to youtube at my um at my um virtual ap leadership academy channel and check that out and, and and see if it works for you i don't know might be in and out there too but if but we'll be we'll be clear next week make sure that you get get, get a copy of this Whoop. get a copy of closing the attitude gap because I'm, I'm gonna be working with this for a little while but i'm also still gonna be here and again i thank everybody you made this number you made this a bestseller four months ten thousand copies so over 10,000. I don't even have the exact numbers yet. They're still going to, they still got to get them to me, but it's well over 10,000. And then, you know, my leadership books, I'm not using the content right now, but, it, but some people on here may not even know I've written these. So the assistant principal 50 and the aspire, let me do that again. The assistant principal 50, the aspiring principal 50, get your hands on both, you know, wherever you get your books, um, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, barnes on uh, principalcafele.com, or you can go straight through the publisher ASCD.org. And um, if you're getting bulk copies, because a lot of you who are leaders, you're getting bulk for your staff, just call their customer service number. You'll see it on the website, and that way you can get the discounts. And don't forget, y'all, I'm a speaker. So I do want to come out and speak at your schools, your conferences, your events, your programs, whatever it is. So you just go to principalcafele.com and reach out to me. Don't forget, tomorrow I'm going to have the commentary. 
um, on my virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page. So make sure that you like and follow that page. And I'll have the commentary fully up by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Right. And um, lastly, you know, as I always say, take care of your diet. Make sure you're eating right and take care of your um, take care of your health. So make sure that you're getting that exercise in. You know, I was able to do about three miles a day every day this week while I'm on this little mini vacation. So got it in. My wife said, sure, she, she she did as well. We both did together. So, you know, we got that exercise in. So make sure you get that exercise in. Keep that mask on. Hey, hey, hey y'all, let me share this with you real quick. I was in the restaurant today and um, eating breakfast before I came up here. And two two people, a, a, a couple was sitting down having um, breakfast. A couple that they knew that they didn't realize was there came and, and, and stood over them. And they engaged, I, I watched this thing. They engaged in about a 20 minute conversation. They were this far apart from each other and no one had a mask on. I'm like, y'all don't think this is serious, do you? You think you you think your vaccination is going to take care of everything? It, it it it's it's vaccinated people in the hospital, right? It's vaccinated people in bad shape. So the vaccine, you know, gives you a little safety net, but it doesn't mean now you can be reckless. So he got two couples that hadn't seen each other. They knew each other, but hadn't seen each other because I listened. They were sitting that close to me. I made sure they weren't too close to me. Right. And they, I mean, they was in each other's faces for like 20 minutes, man. I'm like, I say, like, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't, can't see all that mist. Right. But it, but we've seen now on TV, it's there. Right. It's there. So all that mist is going back and forth, back and forth. They probably, you know, I ain't going to go that far. It, wear your mask, y'all. You see, you see folks like, like, I don't even get on the elevator with folks that don't wear the mask, man. If I don't have mine on, because sometimes in the hallway, I don't have it on. Put it on when i see folks just throw the mask on right so with that said folks i appreciate you despite our poor connection today i appreciate you being here we're going solo next week and i'll uh we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get heavy with this topic next week so other than that despite the challenges have a great week have an extraordinary week have your best week yet peace peace thumbs up and then cock that fist back with me and count for three. One, two, three. Bam! I'll see you next Saturday from Jersey City. Tell a friend, tell a colleague, tell a family member. Get with us next Saturday morning.